We are in deep shock to learn that Sir David Ahmed not longer with us. Tamil campaigns were one of many causes Sir David Amis backed. Supporters gathered outside Parliament to show respect. A Labour MP laid flowers in Sir David Amos's memory. All MPs marked his death with a minute's silence. May the bright memory of his rich life ever outshine the tragic manner of his death. Let us keep silence. Thank you. I'm sorry the House is returning in such tragic circumstances. Outside, another cause grateful for his backing, an Iranian resistance movement set up a shrine to Sir David Amis. Inside, the Prime Minister spoke of the attack that took his life as he gave advice to his constituents. Sir David was taken from us in a contemptible act of violence, striking at the core of what it is to be a member of this House and violating the sanctity both of the church in which he was killed and the constituency surgery that is so essential to our representative democracy. In his constituency, a tribute mural at the skateboard park. Almighty Father, we ask your blessing upon... And at the church where he was killed, a moment of celebration as news reached his constituency that another of his pet campaigns had triumphed and the Queen had granted South End City status. Your pardon me if I have a Sir David Amos grin because we've just heard that South End has been granted city status. Hip hip! Hooray. Back in the Commons, memories were stirred of the killing of Labour MP Joe Cox five years ago on her way to meet constituents in the Batley and Spen seat now represented by her sister. I remember very clearly the moment I took the phone call saying she had been attacked. I remember physically trembling and the visceral pain that overtook me. And it breaks my heart to think that another family has had to experience that phone call and the nightmare which follows. I know the honourable members and their staff will have spent the weekend worrying about their own safety. The emotion is the same across the house. But I remember just how acutely Joe's loss was felt on these benches. So today, on behalf of the entire Labour Party, I want to lean across, to reach across, and to acknowledge the pain that's felt on the opposite benches. And I do. One of Sir David Amos's closest political friends said he hoped his death would trigger a crackdown on toxic social media posts. We are now systematically vilified, day after day. And I simply say to you, ladies and gentlemen, that enough is enough. Many of the tributes have been peppered with happier memories and laughter. MPs and peers then left Parliament and crossed the road to St Margaret's Church for a service of remembrance. We shudder at loss. How could we do otherwise? Yet we also thank those who serve in politics. We need them. Back in Essex, Sir David Amos's widow, with some of their family, including two of their five children, read messages of support attached to floral tributes left at the church in Leoncy, where he was murdered while giving advice to his constituents. Gary Gibbon. I've been speaking with Conservative MP Karen Bradley and Labour MP Chris Bryant. I started by asking Karen Bradley if, at this moment, it didn't matter which party they were from. No, it really doesn't. Um, the one thing that moments like this do, and we saw it five, over five years ago with Joe Cox, is it just rem we all remember that we have far more in common than anything else and that we all want the same thing, which is to help our constituents. It doesn't matter what side of the, uh, the house you sit on. Do you worry at all, Chris Bryant, that perhaps the Commons itself is too combative and is not cooperative enough, does not give a lead in that direction? Um, I think the politics over the last 
20 years that I've been an MP has got considerably more sour. Um, there's a toxic element to it, which is very unpleasant. And um, the chamber of the House of Commons was always designed to be combative. But, um, but, but it's, I think we do, we, we do all have a duty to try and tone down that viciousness. We, we, we can't keep on spitting venom in one another's faces. It is, incidentally, also incumbent on some of the press. Um, because all that clickbait journalism, which you know, provides front pages with people being called traitors and um, enemies of the people and all of that kind of stuff, I think that, that is, it's profoundly toxic. But we've heard this before, Karen Bradley, uh, when Joe Cox was murdered. People asked again then about the atmosphere in the House of Commons. I absolutely have always worked on the basis that you can't get anything done if you're discourteous to colleagues and you don't treat them with respect. And we've talked today about James Brokenshire, who as a minister was incredibly effective because he treated everybody with respect. But then, Chris Brandt, if that's the case, isn't, doesn't it behove you to improve the situation within the House of Commons itself? Perhaps the very idea of sitting opposite each other and shouting at each other is actually a very bad one. Isn't it time to just change the whole bloody look? Well, one of the things I suggested after Joe Cox's uh, death was that we should, at least for one day, all sit not on government and opposition benches, but we should just completely mix up, um, even if it was just for one day, to kind of give that impression. But, I, I, look, the thing is, you can be absolutely passionate about the things you care about, but I still have to be respectful of the people on the other side. A certain degree of courtesy, I think, enables your debate. And, and, and I take my, my cue from that, if you like, from David Amos. David, I could never persuade him to support gay marriage. He was always passionately opposed mm. to gay marriage, but he would always ask me how my husband was. Mm. Uh, so, so you can have all that passion. And I'd say this to anybody who's watching, you know, if you're thinking of putting something on Facebook or Twitter later on today, put all the passion in you want, but just take the abuse out. It doesn't have to be toxic. It can be an incredibly consensual and friendly place. And it can be the smallest room in the country or the biggest room in the country, depending on what's going on. But it still can be somewhere you can get business done, you can scrutinise, but you can work together. Uh, Karen Bradley, this is the fourth fatal or near fatal attack in, the, in just 20 years. Is it time to consider serious security changes? Well, I know that this is being looked at by the Home Secretary and the Speaker, and I will follow whatever advice my local uh, force gives me. Um, but I think, as Chris has said, it's really important. We can't lose that link to our constituencies. So, yes, I'll follow the advice, and I certainly won't put my staff at any unnecessary mm. risk at all. But if you were a normal employee, Chris Brand, mm. uh, surely any employer would change your terms and conditions? Oh, look, as a workplace, uh, you know, we have lost two members of staff to brutal murders in um, five years, and as you say, two others. We've got the worst record of any country in Europe um, for well, murders of, done, of elected what is politicians. To be done? Well, I think part of that is about the toxic nature of British politics at the moment. Um, part of it is uh, some of this. I think the support from police um, forces has been very patchy. Mine happens to be brilliant. I've had a death threat, as you may know, over this last weekend, and the, uh, somebody's already be, is in custody. Um, and um, but some some MPs have told me that they've rung up the police and the police have just laughed at them um, when they've mentioned a death threat. I, I think the police have got to review it in each individual case on a regular basis. Um, we're, we're normally very hesitant about bothering the police because we know that they're very overstretched and they've got a job of work to do for our constituents. But um, this is a, you know, an attack in a sense on, a, on a, an elected politician, is an attack on that whole constituency and on the whole of our democratic system.